Hello and welcome to The Justice Factor. When future generations talk about the history of South Africa and the dark days of apartheid, there will be one name that they cannot fail to mention. Ahmed Kathrada became a political activist at a very young age, became friends and comrades with Walter Sisulu and Nelson Mandela, and was sentenced to life in prison at the Rivonia trial in the early 1960s. He served 26 years in jail for fighting for the freedom of his people. Yet when Kathrada returned from jail, he harbored no bitterness. Instead, with Mandela, Sisulu, and others, they embraced reconciliation and continued to preach non-racialism. Kathrada has now formed a foundation to pursue the goal of a united, non-racial, and democratic South Africa. On this Reconciliation Day, we visited Kathrada and spoke to him about his views on the new South Africa. I began by asking him why he did not seek revenge when he came out of jail after 26 years. No, the most important thing is, <coughs> is consistent with our policy of a non-racial, non-sexist South Africa. Mm. So, and then South Africa is unlike another colonial country, uh, like India and Mozambique. And after the rulers were finished, they went home. Ours, our rulers were South Africans, mm. born in South Africa, no other home. So we couldn't do anything and just dismiss these people. They're not 1,000 or 2,000. So we had to have our policy, theory and practice. We couldn't have that without considering this colonial situation. Mm. So you can't have a policy of bitterness, hatred, revenge, because we're going to live with this, trying to build one nation. And when you came out, there were so many young people, particularly, who were so angry after the events of the 1980s, 1976, and so forth, and your own incarceration. Where, where did you, how did you manage to keep that lid closed when, when people were saying, after the murder, for example, of Chris Hani, saying, no, it's time to go to war? No, I, I, I don't think it was a difficult adjustment at all. Mm. Uh, Considering that, that in the trial, we were expecting the death sentence, right until the last day. Mm. The life imprisonment was a bonus. Uh, so we adjusted fairly quickly to that. Mm. Of course, they didn't, for, for, for political prisoners, life was supposed to be life. For common law prisoners, after 15 years, they could be released, mm. life sentence. So we had to adjust to that uh, because there was nothing on our tickets which said, gave a date of release. So it's a question of adjusting to that. You talk about the policy of the African National Congress, and it's always been a very attractive, non-racial, non-sexist, uh, united and democratic South Africa. And yet, personally, um, surely among yourselves, uh, as the Rivonia trialists, among some of your uh, comrades who joined you, uh, uh, who were arrested afterwards, the, the difference between policy and that naked emotion to are we going to go for them now, was that ever a conflict for you, a tension personally? Not at all. Not at all. I grew up in the Communist Party, mm -hmm. Young Communist League in the Communist Party, where we worked with, it, it was the only organization, non-racial organization. Mm -hmm. uh, in South Africa, the ANC, of course, opened its doors very, very late yeah. to people who are not white. So to, uh, to me, I was in a situation from home, from where I was born. As children, we played around with whites, with African kids. Mm -hmm. And the Young Communist League uh, was a repetition of that type of life. Mm -hmm. So uh, the question of uh, racial hatred never arose in my mind. That history and, and what you internalized and, and many of your comrades internalized, do you think since 1994 uh, the ANC is the governing party, how are we doing in terms of that kind of the battle for non-racialism? I think we have made progress. Uh, I always think of other countries. I think of America. Uh, which has got uh, two, three hundred years of democracy, mm -hmm. they still have racial problems. Uh, 
the African Americans are not yet comfortable after 300 years. Uh, and we are only 20 years old as, as a democracy. So when we speak compar comparatively, I think we have made considerable progress in the 20 years uh, towards the building of one nation. But at the same time, we know the challenges ahead. We have not, let's say, let's lay the, we have laid the foundation of this and we've made some progress in sports, et cetera, et cetera, but our, our long, we have a long way to go. Mm. Do you think issues of addressing the, particularly the economic injustices of the past, um, you know, I'm, I'm interested in the fact that you have all these uh, movements, parties coming up, whether it's the uh, economic freedom fighters or, uh, you know, people like that coming up and say, no, now we need to fight uh, redress in the economic sphere. Um, is that, does that help build reconciliation? Is that a legitimate concern? Does it pose a risk to, to the foundation you say we've laid? You know, that's a continuation of people who have criticized uh, the interim constitution, that we have given away too much. Mm. But those are people we call peacetime heroes. Uh, it's very easy to talk about uh, what we could have achieved, mm. but they were not there at the time because we always stood for a peaceful transition. And the very question of negotiation implies give and take. Mm. It's, it's not a victory of one side and a defeat of the other. It's a negotiated settlement. See? And of course, there was give and take. And people, some people who look back and said we gave away too much, but they were not dealing with reality. Mm. It, it was not a victory. It was a negotiated settlement. Mm. It's give and take. Yeah, I, I, and, and given that, though, when they point out to the face of, of poverty in South Africa and they say it, it, it's black, uh, it's overwhelmingly black, and they look at, uh, they say, inequality, you know, you have uh, uh, largely whites at the top and, and black at the, at the bottom end of that. How, how do we make sure that we address that problem without reversing the gains we've had? On the non -racial. Well, I'm not in government, uh, but right from the start, the policy was concentration on the poorest of the poor. From, I'm just a, a rank and file member of the ANC now, and I can say that we have not succeeded sufficiently mm. in our focus on the needs of the poorest of the poor. I don't know much about budgets and and business, mm. but here I can speak as a, as a rank and file member, and I think that greater portion of the budget and policy should have been devoted and should be devoted mm. towards the needs of the neediest in this mm. country. Mm. And to narrow the gap between uh, the haves and the have not. Mm. After the break, we continue our conversation with ANC veteran Ahmed Kafrada. ENCA.com.